raving and ranting, and she's always puffing and panting, and she's always screaming and shouting, and she's always brewing up tea. Grandpappy's never late for his dinner, cause he loves his leg of beef, and he washes it down with a brandy and a fresh made pot of tea. Have a oh, cup of tea. the mic's all the way over here. Have a cup of Sorry, kids. Have Attention. A cup of tea. <laughs> Going great Calling so far. all antique collector and treasure Hallelujah. hunters, Hallelujah. we are announcing a sale at Cuomo's Books. Hallelujah. Everything Hallelujah. that must go. A Friday the Thirteenth podcast, festering your hosts and souls personnel, David Lawler and Brahma Knox. This week's special uh, cup of time includes. Um, well, a cup. It's at like tea, and it's got ivy on it. How's it going? We are uh, recovering from terrible, terrible cold-like symptoms, right? Is that your excuse for not being able to read my writing? I'm really out of there. Plus, it's so dark. <laughs> it's so dark. It's a cup of time, and it is so dark. Have some tea with me, beautiful. Mm. Guest star Hillary Shep. I've got um, the kink, that kink song, Have a Cup of Tea in My Head, because... We've been talking about it. So this is, uh, uh, Barbara Sachs wrote this, and she is basically, I guess she was major domo at Frank Mancuso's Hometown Productions, because her name always appeared at the end credits, so they gave her an opportunity, I guess, to write a script. They were probably hard up for scripts while they were working on the beginning of the show. What does major domo mean? Look, that's Amy Schumer over there. It's a very young Amy Schumer. (laughs) What does major domo mean? You know, basically like president, vice president, whatever. Executive vice president, call it that. Ah, okay. My executive vice president, Smithers. Um, she's going to kill this young lady here? Yeah. Well, that's no good. I, I thought... Is this a kid or is it a young lady? Looks like a young lady who could be so, a possibly a kid. Like I said, it looks like Amy Schumer. I mean, she's killing kids. That would be worse. And I'm having not tea, but uh, Diet Coke. So have a cup of Diet Coke. So, um... Would you say? I'm adding sound effects. Mm. Oh, I see. Ah! Oh, God. There that's it goes. A, that's quite a crazy effect with the ivy that comes. It's like stop motion, I growing think. Growing out of the cup. Strangling her. Uh, I did a little research. Just a little. Not enough, of course, because nothing is never enough on this show. Um, this is, it's, they call it later in the, oh, here we go with the heat gets hotter. It's, yeah, it is a nice effect, isn't it? Now, here's Hillary Shepard looking absolutely f***ing insane. Excuse the language there. I think that's just the way she looks. <laughs> and uh, she's complaining about the synth, and I would be complaining about it too. Except this is 1987, and everything was about synthesizers. We all loved it. Oh, yeah? Well, I hate it. So dump it she has the classic rock star hair. I mean, it's like more rock star hair than any rock star ever actually had. She had, I think she went to Roby's stylist. That's oh, what I think. No doubt. Yeah. We should probably do, for a limited time this episode only, a lady dye hair watch. Now, what do you think? You're the hair expert. I mean, for an 80s hairstyle, it looks great. I like the little red streaks. This is um, Hillary Shepard playing Lady Dye. Lady Dye, the appropriately titled Lady Dye. She's a hip rock star in this episode. She's one of only two rock stars that we see. On the show, the other one was Angelica, played by Vanity. But in this one, she's the bad guy. In in Mesmer's Bobble, Angelica was just a victim of a obsessive fan. Hillary Shepard is uh, is an actual musician. She was in a band called American Girls. And hopefully, maybe find some stuff if I can find some archive stuff. I wonder if they were named after the Tom Petty song, you know, American Girl. Hey, huh. What do you think of my Tom Petty? Maybe. According to what I saw when she was the percussionist and co-lead singer. She's like Sheila E. Yeah. She's a regular Sheila E, except she's a Hillary S. This this character she's playing here, this lady dies, is very high maintenance um, rock star that you wouldn't really want to deal with. Like her. Poor, In other words, her, she's a rock star. Her poor Okay, because they all are. Oh, you don't know anything about They're real rock stars. All high maintenance, please. This one's a regular Taylor Swift. Uh, she she was in um, two episodes of Deep Space Nine, playing the nearly schizophrenic, genetically enhanced Lauren character. 
uh, was kind of like a nymphomaniac and hit on Dr. Bashir every opportunity she got. She was one of the more amusing aspects in this two-episode story arc they did with Dr. Bashir. And this is The Heat Gets Hotter, which we continue to hear throughout the run of the show, so there's some good continuity there. And apparently Ryan's a big fan. Of course. <laughs> but Now, who Mickey goes grocery isn't. shopping dressed the way she does? She is do dressed mean? to the nines to get groceries. Mickey's a little overdressed for grocery shopping. Is that your point? She also doesn't like rock music, so that makes me like her a little less. <laughs> so she's kind of like an old fuddy-duddy. Yeah. Uh, you and your kids and your newfangled. How young are they supposed to be? I mean, like... I don't know. Guess there's Birdie. Um, how how much older is Mickey than Ryan? I feel like Mickey's in her th- early thirties, and Ryan, all right, maybe late twenties. I'll give her late twenties. Yeah. And Ryan is in his what teens? I mean, you told me before he dresses like a little boy, and look at him—he he dresses like a little boy. He dresses like a teenager, but I don't think he's supposed to be a teenager. I think he's supposed to be like maybe college student dates. I'd give age—I'd give him twenty-two and her twenty-six because she was about to get married in the eighties. And well, if you weren't married by the time you were twenty-six, you might as well just sign up for your Grim Reaper there, <laughs> um, lady spinster license. I don't know about that, but their age difference doesn't have to be that much. It's just that she's more mature. Remember that line in Airplane, Lorna Patterson says? So she's crying and Leslie Nielsen comes over. She's like, are you okay, Randy? And she's like, I'm just trying to deal with all this. Besides, I'm 26 and I'm not married. Yeah. Okay, Jack is working on a protein shake, apparently, and he's using mice as a subject, but he's also using this as a way of staying away from her. For some reason, he, Bertie's like got a thing for Jack, because frankly, he's Jack. I mean, why wouldn't you? Dude, I'd marry him if I weren't already hitched. Um... And he doesn't want to have anything to do with her. He's kind of like avoiding her, like a plague. Well, she seems a little domestic for him. You, you see he has a lot of hobbies. He doesn't really need to be. She also seems a little desperate. What, what exactly is her, like, how did they explain how um, they know Birdie? Uh, maybe she's part of their neighborhood association. She is a social worker. She, I guess, takes care of homeless people. That's sort That's of the lead-in of the story, context. right? Context. So let's, um, I have a little note on the actress here. Let's, uh, let What's her name again? Max, Maxine, Maxine Miller? Maxine Miller. Maxine Miller. Her name is Maxine Miller. She's a Canadian actress. <laughs> and I just wanted to note a few other things Excuse that she me. was on. Um, you've been watching Supernatural these past many yes, months. Yes, and I'm finally in the final season, season 15. The show went on forever. And she was in two episodes, one called Hunteri Hirochi, which I might not be saying that right, but that's my best interpretation. And Bedtime Stories, so those were two supernatural episodes she was in. She's appeared on many, many shows and movies, but some to mention are she was on Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers? She See? played, yes. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. She was on the... Beautiful day. <laughs> Will you be mine? Millennium, that Won't show. Won't you be mine? Millennium that starred Lance Hendrickson. She was on five episodes of that as a character called Justine. Now, who could that be, boys and girls? And she, I've got Mr. Robinson's neighborhood going on here. She also appeared on the Chris Isaac show episode Home Fires. Are you sure it wasn't Home Fries? <laughs> you tend to be dyslexic sometimes. <laughs> you know, this is like the uh, Dyslexic Film Society presents Chevy Tace and Felch. Thank you, Doc. It's very funny. Um, she, you know what she reminds me of? I get her mistaken because she reminds me of Rebecca Scholl, who played. Uh, the older woman on, on Wings. That's what she looks like. She looks a lot like her. She looks a little bit like her, but she doesn't Was quite... It, what did she play? Faye? Faye, yeah, Faye? yeah, yeah. But she, does, she doesn't quite have as much of a ditzy demeanor as that actress. Pronounce that? Okay, here, here we go with the obnoxious cop. How dare you try to help me with my murder investigation? Get out of here! Right, so they're... I o- said good day, They're sir. autopsying the homeless girl from the first scene who, who died. I don't know how these guys just get to walk into an autopsy scene. Maybe but, Ryan said, oh, we're cops. Yeah, yeah, Ryan Except is you don't look like him with a wry talking. mustache. Yeah. This guy is really nasty to them. He's like, every question he answers, he answers it sarcastically. I know. He's really, I mean, like, this is where your Canadian tax dollars, I mean, your New Orleans tax dollars go. He kind of looks like Kurtwood Smith, but with a really bad mustache. A little bit, yeah. But I don't think Kurt Smith, Kurtwood Smith didn't look like this at this time, I don't think. He was the bad guy in RoboCop, remember? Mm. <laughs> he was really fun, too. Um, so, <clears throat> here we have, and it's still my contention anyway. I know you disagree with me about Cupid's Quiver, but um, this is the first instance 
where we have a cursed object that gives its owner something in return. And it's actually, when I say something, I mean something viable, something tangible. It's giving her youth. You're not supposed to know that yet, although it's more than obvious. The victim drinks tea from the cup and is strangled by the leaves we just saw in the design of the cup. And that, for some reason, gives Lady Di her, her not-so-eternal youth because it goes away just as quickly. I feel like it's the way it's played. It's almost it's like um, a drug, and it loses its potency. The however long it lasted, the first time she did it, it becomes um, like it lasts less long. In be- strangled. Yes, it la- it doesn't last as long in between and each time. Oh yeah, a clue. So so she keeps having to do it sooner. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, and it's just like that Leech Woman movie. Uh, do you remember that? That B movie we watched, they showed it in a Mystery Science Theater, but it's a universal cheap, kind of a, a B movie from Universal Studios back in the 50s. And it was called The Leech Woman, and it was about this, um, if you mix pineal juice with blood, with this special formula, you would, you would get your youth back. But the youth kept going away faster and faster, so this woman had to keep killing people constantly. Yeah. And then she finally just gives up the ghost and just shatters or something. I don't know. Kind of like the way this episode ends. But you should really... I mean, like, it's its obviously something that appeals to, say, a rock star's vanity, if you will. I guess they do have it. It could have been some... It could have been a different person, too. It could have been... They could have used a, a fashion model. They could have used an actress or actress or actor. They've done it before. They did... Remember that Vanity's Mirror episode about the compact? Yeah. It was a... Well, for the compact... Actually, that's interesting because it starts off with one ability, but then it becomes something else makes you fall in love with somebody if you reflect it there in their eyes or something, mm-hmm. right? But then later on, somebody picks it up and it's used, I don't know, to get rid of wrinkles or something. I don't know. It's like a model thing. A bunch yeah. of models in that episode. It's, it is kind of a similar idea to, to this. All I was able to find out about Swapper's Ivy, which is what he's talking about right now, is that mm-hmm. it's not really known as Swapper's Ivy. It's known as uh, Devil's Ivy. And the reason for that is because it is almost a pestilence because it grows and it kills everything around it and it grows wildly and it's very easy to just cultivate. So it's like a weed? It's almost like a weed, except it's not a weed, it's a plant. And my mother had ivy. I remember she kept, because she had a sunroom for a time in this apartment we lived in in Cincinnati. It was in the front with all the big windows and she kept a whole bunch of hanging plants there and she had a whole bunch of ivy and I'm pretty sure she had doubles ivy too. What's interesting is that you can grow it out of a cup. All you need is like a, a little bit, like a cup of soil. Just a cup of soil, some water, and, and the ivy, and it will grow. And it goes straight out of a cup. And it's interesting that they made a cup with a design of it on so it. So it's not really like a fragile, hard-to-grow plant. Even I could keep it you alive. You could have ivy all over, this, <laughs> all over this place. I know you think you have a brown thumb, but... <laughs> Whatever the opposite of a green thumb is, that's You made I a have. cactus style. I don't know how you managed that. Well, I had some help from the cat on that one. Oh, my throat's killing me, kids. But I'm here so working for you. What is happening? We're going this scene? <laughs> up in a, into an apartment building. I'm, I'm assuming. Mickey and Ryan. Ryan uh, Mickey should not be wearing white. It's not a good idea to wear white, especially after Labor Day. Hey. This episode premiered when? October. 19th? That's after Labor Day, isn't it? I mean, I suppose you shouldn't wear white if you're a character on this show because you're likely to get somebody else's blood all Can over you it. you fill us in on the whole wearing white after Labor Day? What? What's the What's the deal with that? I don't understand why it's bad. I mean, or I think that's it, just white shoes. It's not bad. T- no, you're not supposed to wear white, period. No, no. As far as I know, you're not supposed to... You only wear white shoes. No, you're the, thinking of cereal, Mom. It's white, all in the white. Sp- in the spring and summer... <laughs> He, so, she kills Patty Hearst at the end of the movie because she's wearing white shoes. Basically, starting in, like, starting in... You Whoa! Know, there goes a Murphy Starting bed. in March, you could start putting white shoes on again, but, but after Labor Day, it's This is the tacky. wrong time to do it. I, and look. I have no idea. Yeah, because I guess this is October. There's a skeleton right there, and it's, that's because of the, the white after Labor Day. I, you know, there was, like, this weird time period where everybody had this kind of look. What, this huge hair? 
Like, remember... I don't know about this. I feel like this is over the top, to be honest with you. It seems quite Do you exaggerated. you remember, like, when mm-hmm. Fleetwood Mac came back with Tango in the Night, their comeback album in 1987? Sort of. And do you remember Stevie Nicks' hair? It was all big, just like that. I mean, she always had pretty big hair anyway. Not always. She had shag. And there's Lisa Jacob. There's a little girl hanging around backstage. This is Lisa yeah. Jacob, who uh, is probably one of the more famous. And she was a very famous, I guess, child actress. Um, she started here, and she would make a second appearance in the Playhouse. And then she would appear in Joe Dante's wonderful movie, The uh, Matinee, which is just a wonderful, it's a great film. Just bought it on um, Blu-ray a while back, earlier in the year. And then she appeared in Mrs. Doubtfire, I think. She appeared in uh, Independence Day. And later on in life, she appeared in this short film called George Lucas in Love. Do you remember it? Yeah, barely. It's basically like Shakespeare in Love. Except it's George Lucas, and he's inspired by this girl that's dressed like Princess Leia. And frankly, I think it's a better movie than Shakespeare in Love. I'm sorry. I don't understand why that movie gets so many accolades. And she's a Facebook friend of mine, and we had a a couple of arguments because she's got some weird ideas. She thinks Che Che Guevara was a great hero, and that Nelson Mandela was a great hero. And, you know, she didn't really like me uh, calling them torturers and murderers and all that stuff. You're always getting into political arguments with people. I like to. It's fun. I like to know what people know. And if they're on the right track, then that's fine. But if you're not, if you're, if you're under the pretense because, just because good things were said about people, you've got a, a lot more learning to do. I suppose you should be thorough in your research. You should. But Lisa's a very nice, uh, she's actually very nice because we've spoken many times. Um, I believe she, she got married, I, and she retired from acting, and she just sort of, um, I guess, does weird life coaching. or what, I don't know what she does. Here comes another guy who's dead. I'm a little confused because she already looked young when the... I think she saw a wrinkle drink. and freaked out like people do. I see. Thank goodness I am not in show business. <coughs> I can just age naturally. We are kind of. I mean, <laughs> I'm a filmmaker. You're, you were an actress. You still are. I think your problem is that you're not vain. That's your problem, honey. So Bertie is there, and we've got... The sarcastic another, cop. Sarcastic cop. There's uh, Mickey's fiery red hair. It's time for the Roby Hair Watch. So what do you think? Oh, brother. Um. <laughs> hey, at least we don't have to do a bra watch. You could do a Lisa Jacob hair watch if you want. No, I'm good. Well, the wind is kind of blowing her hair around, so that's hardly fair in this scene. But it's, yeah, it's in the um, bigger and curlier phase in this episode. Mickey's kind of like trying to ingratiate herself to the little girl by talking to her like she's three. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, now, come on, little girl. Tell us about what you saw. Tell us the bad person who killed. She, I mean, I don't know. She's maybe kind of small for her age, but she's clearly like about nine or ten. And, she, and Mickey is talking to her like she's a toddler. Did you see someone get strangled by plants? It's like, you know, when we talk to the cats, <laughs> that's how she talks to her. Uh, I wrote here, oh yeah, I, I did write Lady Die Hair Watch, and I also wrote Lady Die is a Bitch. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote the exclamation point. Probably because she was giving her manager a bad time. Yeah. Uh, Bertie has a crush on Jack. Jack likes him young, okay? That's what I wrote, because Jack has no interest in older women. He likes him young. It's kind of messed up. In fact, Jack's motto is, bring him young. He's not that, uh, he's no spring chicken, you know. Yeah, but he's a man. What do you want? Men like younger women. Hey, <laughs> older older women like younger men. So There's the Mercedes. Yeah, that's why you always see all these older women hitting on Ryan in the series, except you don't. What did I say we should call the car? Curse-mobile? The curse-mobile, yeah. Didn't Ryan call it that? Mm. Although the curse-mobile sounds like an accident waiting to happen. Yeah, you will. probably not. Do they at least have a cassette thing on there? No. Oh, wait. No, I think they... No. Is that It's a, just a radio. No, the thing under there, the little slot. I think that might be a tape. Yeah. Oh, goodness. That's where he keeps... I haven't seen a Ryan car Ryan keeps like all his Angelica and Lady Die tapes. Giving us there. a very tight shot of the car radio. I haven't seen a car radio that old in so long. Oh, here's the song. 
She doesn't want to hear it. It's a rock version. Late 80s rock metal version, hair metal version of I'm a little teapot. Mickey's complaining. What kind of music does Mickey like? I have no idea. Maybe we'll find Make out. something up. Figure it out. Um, what is she into? She likes... <laughs> She's, you know what? She's into, uh, she's into, uh. Show tunes. No, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say and, something. Um, I was going to say Sade. That's what she Sade. likes. She likes Sade. Oh, yeah, you know? something mellow. Smooth operator. Or she likes smooth jazz. She likes Barbara Streisand, okay? You think she likes Streisand? I can't see it. I know. She seems, her. I think her, she's into she cult. Maybe she's into world that, music. World music. Lady Smith Black Mombazo or, 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 um, Buckwheat Zydeco or. Something like that. Uh, Ziggy okay. Marley. Could be. Could be. So it's male. You know, Jack is um, putting it together with the cup does. Here comes Birdie wearing this kind of inappropriate for her outfit. What do you think? A little Birdie dress watch. It's very odd. It looks like she forgot to put pants on. And <laughs> Mickey's trying to be nice about it. It's. It looks like something y- you might wear when you were sixteen. Um, if you like to wear dresses, I'm guessing you like to wear dresses when you're. Even 16. I wouldn't have worn something that. Short Regan wouldn't wear 16. that. No, no, no. Regan likes long stuff. She dresses like a witch. <clears throat> I mean, like a conservative witch. <laughs> hey, all right. Want to make some noise so I can pick this up on the mic? Yeah, I can see you. She stopped immediately. But. It's, uh, what do you think of that art? Is that her album cover? Well, yeah. Yeesh. So. so what else have you got there? What do you got? I got Roby Bra Watch. <laughs> Apparently, we got to uh, do that. She's no, like, we don't. I really don't. Oh, Bertie provides that. exposition. Bertie is uh, our exposition fairy in this. Uh, she is. You wait for the door to shut before you yelled that, Ryan? I don't want to. I don't want anyone to think I might be interested in anybody. I mean, what does he want to do? Like, what do you want him to do? Like, shack up with her and have her bake him little cookies? Well, I don't know. He could be he's nicer. Not- <laughs> he could be a little nicer. That's the problem. He's not really. He's behaving like a like a, a little boy a little bit. You know, it's weird. He um. He should be uh, gentlemanly at least. They could give her the you know the speech. You know, Marty. You don't want to be involved with a guy like me. <laughs> I live a dangerous life. You could get hurt. That kind of thing. Now here's um, the little girl, little Lisa Jacob. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. There, was she trying to get into the uh, the Lady Dive show? I don't think she's going to get in. She's too um, she's too young. Well, no, obviously. Did you ever notice they, they want to dress like her? And I've known people who were big fans of certain recording artists, and they would dress like them. Um, well, of course, there was all the like Madonna. Madonna. Yeah, 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 Madonna was, was the most big. obvious um, example. Cindy Lauper, you could try to dress like her. That would be a lot more work. But um. Well, I've talked about my experience going to a Fish concert. Now, I'm not a Fish fan. Uh, but I had a friend who was very big into fish, and she took me. She was trying to com- She had to convince me, so she took me to a fish concert. Boy, okay, the cat doesn't like fish. Actually, the cat loves fish. Fish! Fish! Oh, here she comes. Anyway. Lady Di is being interviewed by um, a disc jockey here. Anyway, all everybody at the fish concert, they were all like people my age or younger, probably in their 20s, right? Mm-hmm. And they were all dressed like hippies. All of them dressed like hippies with beads and long flowing things and doing this waving arm thing and acting like they were high. It was, it was hilarious. But Nikki and Ryan, somehow they get we know into the radio the station and then they, the DJ kicks them out. Get out! <laughs> she's uh, getting wrinkled, so she's running away to go off and use her cup. And uh, Bertie recognizes her. Bertie's interesting. That's her first kind of morally ambiguous character here with what she does later on. We get into a lot of morally ambiguous situations in later episodes. Most of the characters are morally ambiguous. 
I don't know if Birdie would be in that category because she chooses not to be. Basically. She chooses not to, but she was thinking about doing it, though. That's the big thing. Right. Yes, I mean, that's the whole point of the Ryan, whole Jack thing. It's it's not really about Jack. It's about her. Both Ryan and Mickey have been morally ambiguous later on. Yes. Ryan with the boxing gloves. Yeah, and everybody Ryan gets, and Mickey with the Jack the Ripper uh, knife or scalpel. Everybody gets tempted by the, the cursed objects when, when it comes down to it. But, um, but I mean, Ooh, the, what I'm saying is the there. whole point of the Birdie and Jack thing is not really about Jack and whether or not he wants to... Um, be involved with anyone. It's about Birdie feeling like the problem is that, she's too that old. Jack wants somebody young. She wants so to that's be, why uh, she's tempted to use the cup. Yeah, you can't find the cup. But now somehow, yeah, Birdie's lifted the cup off first. So I Actually, guess that's no, it's morally ambiguous. Lisa took the Lisa, cup. She oh, the little it. girl took the cup. Sorry, right. They right. gave it. Then she gives the cup to Ryan and Mickey in exchange for potato chips, which she never gets, by the way. <laughs> and sure then Birdie breaks her. in later and steals the cup. I'm sure they gave her something to eat. See, she's got the cup. Um, did Jack already has? Um, he has like a um. Hmm? A, we we're going to talk about it in the next episode. Obviously, there's something going on there involving Lewis's wife, but. There was also this woman who was a doctor or scientist that he was involved with and that he was going to marry, but you cannot know these people. You cannot have relationships with these people, otherwise you will die. Right. It's not very good luck to get involved with people from curious goods. And according to what we learned from the cops, there have been five murders in this park. Mickey hates Ivy. Mickey hates Ivy. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote Mickey right. hates Ivy. I also wrote, this is a story about vanity. And I also, and when I say vanity, I don't mean vanity, the artist. Uh, and um, I don't know if it's really about vanity. I mean, it's think also, about it. There's like, also the, it's a, it's a message episode because it's about homelessness too. Think about the fact that she, if she is a rock star, she has to, maintain an image to me it's more about desperation she, she doesn't really have a choice it's not like you're gonna have an old lady rock star i no no i'm sorry i don't agree with with artists like that it is about the band any more than anything and it's self-love it's self-worship it's the worship of beauty the worship of youth she can right, but- she can become anything she wants to be she chose to be this rock star person and Maybe it's a tough life, or maybe it isn't. I think, frankly, working every day, going to work every day, and making a pittance compared to what these people make is far more work. I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think this particular episode goes that that deep. It's a pretty good episode, but I think I don't that, think it likes rock stars. I don't, I don't think this episode. Like rock stars. I'm just saying that if they wanted to get into it a little more, <laughs> I I just don't really think it's entirely about vanity. I, I see her more as desperation than than vanity. There's other. Episodes later that are much more about vanity. I missed all these notes. There's a song called The Heat Gets Hotter. You said that, yeah. Yeah, but I wrote, The Hair Gets Bigger. <laughs> the Hair Gets Bigger. Uh, it certainly does. Dying for Love is the name of Lady Di's new album. I think after she shatters yeah. into a million pieces, uh, it'll probably go platinum, at least. I remember, this is back before Napster, so they actually probably. did have record sales. Did we see... Uh, well, I guess we missed the Tales from the Crypt reference, didn't we? There was a Tales from the Crypt uh, comic book in there. Is that not coming up here? And when she's settling in here in her little, I don't know, homeless area for the night. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, Tales from there. the Crypt. Right, right on time. So she's got a copy of Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt started in the early '90s after Friday the Thirteenth went off the air, and it was another anthology show, probably the last of them. Around this time, there were a lot of anthology shows. We talked about that. I remember in the early 80s, there was a show called Dark Room, but it was canceled after like five or six episodes. They I never took, saw that one. It was like on NBC at 10 o'clock. You wouldn't have been able to. You were too young. Mm. They took a couple of episodes and made the movie Nightmare. Nightmare's about it. Remember Emilio Estevez? Yes, I do remember and that The Bishop show. and all that and Lance Henriksen. Those were episodes of the show Dark Room. Mm-hmm. 
And then there was um, Amazing Stories, of course, the revival of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. And Did you mention Tales from the Dark Side? Tales from the Dark Side next, and then after that, Monsters. Do you remember Monsters? I didn't watch Monsters. It's Monsters, our favorite show. They showed that. Oh, God, I loved watching all those. They were so much fun. And that was one of the great things about this show is that it could it could be an anthology while also having recurring characters. There was some on HBO too, some anthology shows, right? Um, the Hitchhiker. Right? Just the Hitchhiker. Or there was, wasn't there something else? Red Shoe Diaries. <laughs> yeah. Does that count? Okay. In treatment, the Gabriel Byrne show. He plays a psychiatrist. He's basically a shrink to these people, and it is kind of their own story every week. Mm. Sometimes the shows are about him, but... Um, Didn't that show um, American Horror Story? Is that an anthology American show? Horror Story is kind of an it, anthology, but... except it's a season-long story. Oh, so each, each I see, so it's not quite the same. <coughs> I need to get into that. I'd love to see it. I've heard it's good. I kind of miss those days. Those were fun days. So they brought Lisa in with a promise... And Bertie's putting put a stocking food, on her head. Food and shelter. She, no, really? potato chips, and they don't even have any. I'm sure that they feed the child, okay? I have faith in, in the game. She's like, do you have potato chips? And he's this like, is, you're talking to the potato chip king. So this is kind of similar to the structure. Of, okay, this is oh, really wait, wait, stupid. Wait, did you see what he just did? Yes, he puts the thing there. He puts a cursed object on the desk. It's like... Yeah, yeah, he should have put it in the vault right it away. It goes directly in the vault. Isn't you that the second time he did something like that? Didn't something happen like that? I don't remember. The previous time with the um, Cupid thing, it got taken back because of the security guard, but this time it gets taken back because of Ryan's laziness. But it yeah. seems like that's the structure of the episode. It's like they chase the cursed object, they think they've got the cursed object in their possession secured, and then it gets taken again, so then they have to go back out and get it. Those are the beats. Yeah, but the, nobody uh, expected Birdie. She's like the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expected her. They didn't expect her to <laughs> to steal the thing back, no. So that's I asked, what's wrong with Birdie? <laughs> She's desperate. She doesn't want to be alone, okay? There's the Chinese lantern again. They have really good continuity, or they just leave things alone. Feeling left that, out of a youth obsessed... Are those colored pencils over there? Yes. Feeling left out of a youth obsessed society does not make you vain. Those are Ryan's. They have to be Ryan's. He's the artist, right? Yes, but can you address my point instead? Well, she's lonely. There's yes, lots of lonely exactly. People out there. So it's nothing to do with being. And a lot of a lot of us don't have access to cursed cups that make us younger. <laughs> Some of us have to develop a personality. No, I'm just kidding. Birdie has a personality. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you're an fault, idiot, Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> He's like, what? See? Who would take it? Why would you want to be young? Young people are stupid. He's like the youngest person in the room, except what? for the little girl, huh? She still. We, she got into the cab and was still wearing the stocking on her head. That means the guy driving the cab stopped for her, even though she was wearing a stocking on her head. You know, a fair's a fair. But would you? I'm sorry. If you were a cab driver, would you really pick up a fair that was wearing a stocking on her head? Probably not. Although she's an old lady. Um, okay, Mickey's hair looks great in this scene as she's uh, of course. talking to the little... What? Do we know Lisa Jacobs' character's name? I'm getting tired of calling her mm. little girl. Didn't write it little down. girl. Drat. She's just a little girl. Okay. Drat. <laughs> well, I'm not allowed to swear, so I have to say drat. drat. Mm. Give me five seconds. I'll get the name for you. Keep talking. <laughs> oh, no. He's leaving me alone. Watch um, Mickey try to relate to children. Not very good, but then she likes kids. Though she tries so hard, there's a couple of times like doesn't she try to take care of her nephew at some point, and that goes horribly wrong. Her friend's kid too. Yeah, they always leave her to deal with with children and. Um, Kristen. Kristen. Oh, okay. Thank you. Kristen. Yes. So now Bertie is going to try to use the cup on um. Some guy who's sleeping in the park for some reason. This guy looks fairly healthy to me. I'm not exactly sure what his story is. I 
I think he's just sleeping it off or something. And then so she offers him more booze because that's just what he needs at this point. She was um, going to kill this guy. He looks like he could kill her. He looks like he could just reach his arm out and, like, knock her senseless. He's some but guy. But instead, they wind up talking through the night and becoming fast friends. Is that what happens? She, well, yeah, she doesn't go through with killing him. She's like Steve Martin with the hooker in uh, The Man with Two Brains. He can't go through with it. He can't inject her with window cleaner. <laughs> Why? What does it do? <laughs> <laughs> Causes the brain to die last. I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. Come over here. We're going to have some fun. Duke, 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 Duke up. Oil, oil, oil. Don't drink it, dude. Just go back to your I, rock band. I guess I've never wanted to drink this badly that I would let a strange lady with a teacup hey. approach me on a park. Boy, his fingers are really... Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Sorry. The continuity error there. In the close-up of the stop motion, the hands were clean. Oh, really? Hmm. Here, just take the bottle, okay? I'm not going to kill you. Um, I assume, then, if the cup can't be destroyed, then it's self-cleaning as well. You don't have to clean it. Well, that Since would come evil. in handy. That in and of itself, Think about so. it. An evil teacup. It cleans itself. <laughs> It'd be worth it. I don't know if I would kill someone not to have to do the dishes. Now, when you're finished, say, my, what a lovely tea party. Now, all of all of the peeps out there will get that joke. The peeps? The peeps. <laughs> so, birdie bonds with a bomb, even though that's quite an alliteration. Birdie bombs, bonds with a bomb, yeah. What's Mickey and Ryan and Jack are trying to what is Jack sort doing? things what out is he? here. Hmm? I don't know. Is he playing with his mice again? I have no idea. That's where he was eating yogurt out of a cup or something. Is that is that yogurt or butter? I can't even tell. Why would he be eating butter out of a cup? That's horrible. With his fingers. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Please. Let's eat. You like butter? Let's eat gobs and gobs of butter. Big sweaty handfuls. <laughs> Little mystery science theater joke. That's also for the peeps. Boy, my, I am so nasal. They sat here all night. Here they are. They're still in the park. I'm going to go back. See you later. He's wearing cowboy boots. I, yeah, I don't. I'd like to know what this guy's story is. It's just a whole oh, show on. He about just looks, him. He just looks like a drummer for a band. Maybe he's, Maybe he's Lady, Lady Dies, Dies Drummer. drummer. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Neil Peart. Uh, Lady slept, Dies Drummer. He slept all night in the uh, So, you know, these two, woman, huh? they could be a couple. What do you think? Sure. They could have their own show. Birdie. Birdie and the Bum. Birdie and the Bum. Coming to now, Fox goes, in September. Literally staggering out of the scene. Did he even have any kind of like a... Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, you're the owner of the cup. Ooh, here's a question for you. What if you drink from it? I... What if you drink from your own cup? What happens to you? Do you die? Do you get strangled by the ivy? Do you get what you want? My God, she looks terrible. Oh, Jesus. I have no idea. That's kind of crazy. That's like, um, you know, like folding in on yourself. I don't know how that would work. It's like typing Google into Google? Something like that, yeah. You, no one else, okay? No one gave you the cup. It is yours. What if you drink from it by yourself with no one around? Maybe nothing happens. Maybe it's just like is it going to strangle you? Self cancel, you know, it cancels itself out. Um, looks like a nice morning. <laughs> oh, here come the idiot cops. Great. We got to arrest somebody. I mean, is it really place? fair to call them idiots? There's nothing in their police training that tells them to worry about cups that strangle people. <laughs> With ivy. I really hate his partner's <laughs> coat. It's ugly. It's ugly as hell, but... Well, I never realized how tall Chris Wiggins is. He's taller than everybody. Hmm. Is he? Yeah. I guess he's because he's so right. stocky. I never thought of him as being... He's just a big and tall guy? I guess so, yeah. Like Rodney Dangerfield. Uh, running through the jungle. Closing, What's going on uh, here? Back to school. She's certainly spry. 
They both are. Lady Di is chasing Birdie through the... Whoa! Uh oh, there she goes. Her and the cop Bonk. are both... She kind of looks like a... Lady Di looks like a witch in her aged format. Uh, which I, I... You know what? Oh, I know what she reminds me of. You remember mm -hmm. the Star Trek Miri episode? Yeah. When the kids, when the children start getting really old, they look like that. Yeah, maybe they use the same makeup. You know, bonk, bonk on the head. Mr. Lovey Dovey. Ah! Yeah, they really got them. <laughs> oh, no. Did they even look like killers? I mean, crime. They're too well dressed. Birdie's not dead. Let me guess. She's in frame. Kurtwood Smith over here. This is kind of unfortunate. See, look at that guy's horrible coat. You see it? The blue one? Is no one noticing this? <laughs> see, I was at so many times, but it seems like Jack and Mickey get caught. They get into trouble, and Jack is the, the only one who's like free and running around. <laughs> yeah, I wrote here that Ryan and Mickey get arrested. Jack knows how to elude cops. But Remember, is he, is he, he knows a lot of illegal one. activities. He does. Every single time, he just lets them get busted, and then he... Goes off. <coughs> this is not good. Um, Jack sets up an undercover sting later, which is fun. Unfortunately, I mean, like, this is not, um, again, this is not one of my favorites. We're finally beginning to one of my favorites next week, but this one, I feel like Air Lady Shepard is kind of wasted in the role. She's, she's a much better more versatile actress, you know, than this episode gives her any, any time well, yeah. to do. The, uh, yeah, cause, and because the premise, like I was saying, the premise, they don't go that deep into the the idea of what it is that she needs compared to some of the other episodes. They just, I feel like the writers weren't quite, like, um, fully developed. Here we go. And Jack yet. is a little bit, I hate to say it, I know she's like a bad guy and everything, but Jack mm -hmm. is kind of callous here because he sets up this undercover sting, he just grabs the cup and runs away. Well... To be fair, yeah. he's preventing future murders that this woman would continue to um, commit. I don't know if I, I'm going to sit around weeping tears over that one. I don't see... The problem is that I don't see Jack doing this. I see maybe Ryan doing this. Pardon me. Young man, would you care for a nice cup of tea on this fine morning? So is he... Um, <laughs> He's wearing a rug, too. So to make him look like a young man, you see, this whole thing is about the appearance of youth. If he would, That's why it would have made more sense if Ryan had done it, because Ryan wouldn't have to wear a ridiculous... Uh... But what, why he <laughs> holds it up look. as he runs? He's like, I won, I won, finally, yeah, that, I won I something. I don't quite understand his, uh, his physical attitude as he runs off with a cup i probably would have been more like holding it close to my body and running away but. and since we're coming to the end it it gets even more ridiculous because i don't know what she's doing in there she's trying to i mean uh, all the pancake in the world is not going to solve her problem here yeah and it's funny too because she goes it's showtime <laughs> they're gonna have to cancel the show i think what do you think well this is a concert for homeless charity, which means homeless people aren't getting anything out of this. That is pretty terrible. So it must be like every time she uses the cup, when she ages again, she ages worse really badly, than she like was. the leech woman. Yes, like it goes past the point there where she is. actually was, and that's her now. She looks a little like Madonna now after the, all the plastic surgery. Sorry, Madge. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, she just falls dead onto the pavement. And now we're gonna we're gonna have a coffee, a cup of coffee, and we're gonna complain about people. <laughs> There's the mice. They still look great. Where's the cat? That's what I want to know. Why isn't the cat interested in Jack's new um, experiment? Well, the cat really can't do anything. <laughs> well, look, they they cleaned her up. Cleaned up Kristen, as we now know her name. No way. And, uh, I, you know, I think Birdie uh, needs a little more help. 
What do you mean? Birdie's all right. Because she contemplated killing someone. But she didn't. That's the point. And she could have, because that guy doesn't seem like anybody that anyone was missing. All right. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) (laughs) There's your freeze frame. There's your cup. It's a cup. It's a wee cup of tea. Uh, so, final thoughts? Um, See supervising wait. producer, Major Domo. Okay, I have heard that expression before, but I wanted it defined for the record. Um, the person who gets them is Domo. <laughs> yes, okay. It's like you, you're a Major Domo. I think, yeah, I think the, sto- the show's starting to sort of warm up into uh, what it becomes. It is. There's some fun things in the episode. We'll see you next week. Uh, It was fair. We'll see you next week for Halloween, one of my favorites. We're rushing now. (laughs) Good night. Good night.